Item number 10, conduct of business. A, adopt resolution approving property owner notice and protest process for water and wastewater rate increases for 2012-2013 through 2016-2017. Staff, please. <coughs> Honorable Mayor, Council Member, good evening. Tonight, tonight is our intent to provide you uh, with our recommendation uh, and the reason for those recommendations uh, to set water and uh, uh, wastewater rates. These uh, recommendations were uh, developed uh, jointly between uh, uh, my department and also with finance department, uh, supported by a uh, expert, outside expert, uh, specialized in uh, the same uh, type of uh, uh, rate setting. The project manager is uh, Jim Shannon, and he will help me with the presentation. And also, I have here uh, Robert uh, Howard, uh, the deputy for uh, operation for sewer and uh, uh, water. You will, uh, during this presentation, uh, you will have a uh, history of uh, the rate setting uh, in the last few years. And then uh, you will uh, be provided with uh, the recommendation for the proposed rate for sewer and water, and also with uh, some uh, proposed structural changes to the water and uh, sewer rate, and then next steps. Last time, uh, when uh, you had this item before you was back in uh, May of 2009, when uh, the uh, sewer and water rate was set for uh, uh, three years. At that time, uh, you approved a uh, rate increase for each year of 11.8% .8 for water and 10.2% uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for wastewater. As you heard uh, three years ago, and uh, when you set those rates, and you heard uh, many times since then, including during our last council meeting, the reason for uh, this proposed uh, uh, rate uh, adjustment is uh, the age infrastructure of the city, which uh, had uh, deferred maintenance, deferred replacement, and if uh, is not addressed, will continue uh, to deteriorate. The need for uh, addressing uh, our, age, uh, our aging infrastructure is uh, reflected uh, through experienced unacceptable level of sewer overflow and uh, which has a uh, impact on the public and the environment and our residents. Also, uh, our system experiencing a very high number of water main leaks and breaks. As you know, our uh, age of the infrastructure is between uh, 100 year uh, to 60 year old in average of uh, 60 year old infrastructure. Based on the last uh, uh, rate adjustment, what you approved, the city uh, implemented many projects, replaced uh, 1.5 mile of water and sewer main uh, on Mastic Avenue, replaced and improved the uh, Maple Water Pump Station, replaced uh, the main on Montgomery, and also uh, addressed the problem on Trenton. Three year, 
to continue with the same to continue with the, with the same policy what you said three years ago when uh, the last rate adjustment uh, was uh, approved and to address the need as known by you. Our recommendation tonight is to continue with the same aggressive uh, policy replace, uh, replacing the infrastructure and to adjust our water rates with a 9.8% uh, and our wastewater rates with 10.3%. This rate, how you can see, is slightly below uh, the 10-year projection uh, done three years ago. This uh, is uh, beside setting this, uh, adjusting the rate, also uh, our recommendation is to make some structural adjustment to the rate to improve uh, the equity across the customer base. This generally is a, uh, will have a small financial impact on uh, the users. The impact uh, is, will range between minus or plus $2 for uh, residential uh, units to up to $50 for large commercial users. The subcommittee met twice at the end of March and also uh, in uh, beginning of uh, uh, in, uh, in the beginning of uh, March and end of uh, uh, February and uh, approved uh, policy goals and objectives for setting the rate. I will not go uh, over uh, those policy. I will just highlight uh, uh, a few of them, which was uh, to minimize the financial impact on the customers, to maintain the long-term financial sust uh, sustainability, and also to uh, have a fair and equitable to set rates which will be fair and equitable to all customer classes. How the rates are developed? For uh, water, the rates and the 10-year financial projection includes, uh, includes all of operation and maintenance costs, a uh, slight decrease in water consumption to, uh, due to increased conservation efforts, increase in cost of purchase water from SFPUC, and continuation of uh, uh, the 10-year main replacement schedule as uh, was approved by you. For wastewater, the rates uh, developed includes all operational and maintenance costs, uh, how was presented, uh, uh, including the changes needed to meet uh, the uh, requirements set by the regional board and uh, by the uh, baykeepers. Uh, the same decrease in water consumption and also uh, water uh, plant improvements at uh, the water quality plant and continuation of the 25-year main replacement as approved three years ago. For water, how I indicated be before, you say recommended uh, overall increase for 9.8 percent for uh, each year. This is a overall increase based on the uh, structural changes will be some variation uh, exactly for each customer class. You will see and the public will see upcoming projects uh, taking place 
Just to mention a few, uh, for water will be the main replacement on Marion and Spyglass drives. Replacement uh, of uh, water mains between Genevin and San Bruno Avenue. Construction of the college pump station and uh, uh, also Cunningham and Glenview tanks uh, improvement and uh, also the replacement of uh, the Commodore well, just to mention a, a few projects. For uh, wastewater, 10.3 uh, overall increase for each year. Upcoming projects, Canes, sewer main replacement on Canes, uh, addressing additional problems on uh, Trenton, and uh, uh, replacing sewer mains in the eastern portion of the city. Comparing our existing rates with uh, other jurisdictions around us, you will see that um, our rate for water is slightly higher than uh, the average uh, in the uh, between the jurisdictions around us. And that uh, is the case also for our um, sewer rates. It's very hard to compare uh, rates between agencies uh, based on the fact that uh, our systems are very different. The age of our system is different. Uh, the size of the systems are different and uh, depend a lot how historically those systems were maintained and uh, uh, replaced. Based on the 10-year financial projection, our recommendation is to set the rates for, uh, five, for the next five years. This recommendation was supported by uh, the subcommittee also to set the rates for uh, five years. The reason for uh, this recommendation is to uh, have greater, greater certainty for uh, project planning, also to reduce administrative cost for uh, rate ser uh, setting, and uh, to uh, be able to phase in more gradually those uh, rate structure changes what I mentioned before. I must mention also that you have the opportunity, even if the rates will be approved for five years, in during those five years, any time if our financial picture will change or our uh, 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 need is changing, then you have the opportunity to initiate new process anytime and to uh, make uh, those changes. As I alluded to before, uh, part of our recommendation is to make some structural changes and I will let uh, Jim Shannon to uh, take you through those uh, uh, structural changes. Thank you, Clara. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. Uh, as we look to uh, readjust our rate uh, for the next five years, it's an opportunity to see not only, you know, obviously what's driving the needed rate increases, which is the investment in our capital infrastructure, but to take an opportunity to look to make sure that the way the rates are structured and allocated among different customer types and different customer classes are um, the most fair and ec equitable that is appropriate. So we. We took this opportunity to review this with the, the subcommittee as well as with our, um, our, uh, uh, the folks at Bartle Wells who have helped us with crafting the, the rate modifications who are here tonight. And I know um, Alex Handlers and Kat Sang from Bartle Wells are here. And I'm sure we'll help answer questions later on. But so we have a, a couple of recommendations to adjust the structure for both the water system and for the sewer system rates. And so the first one for water is aligning the fixed charges with meter capacity and spread that uh, alignment out over five years. Essentially, each water bill consists of a, 
a charge based on your meter size and a charge based on how much water you use. Currently, the monthly charges are, um, are, do not reflect exactly the meter flow capacity. For example, a two inch meter has about five times the capacity of a three quarter inch meter, but the monthly fixed charge is only three and a half times greater. So the first recommendation is to, over the period of five years, to readjust the fixed charges so that the uh, large meter customer is, is paying their proportional share of the fixed charge. So that's the, that's the first recommendation. The second one is regarding that variable piece. So right now we have a, a two-tier system where if you use between zero and 18 units of water, a unit of water is uh, 748 gallons, just uh, the trade uh, lingo there for units of water. Right now, 84% of the folks fall into the first tier, and so only 15% fall into the second tier. And so the idea is to, um, to have folks uh, conserve some water. However, right now, since we have 85% uh, in the first tier, we have a little bit of room to make those tiers a little more uh, appropriate for the actual use. So if we switch to a, a three-tier system, we would go from zero to 10, 10 to 20, and then 20 and above for your tier rates. And so it would have a minor impact on some customers. Some customers will see a benefit because they could stay in tier one uh, the whole time and see a little bit lower. Um, some of the higher end folks would impact them a little bit more. But again, the higher end folks are, are a, a little smaller percentage of our total customer class. And then we have a couple of recommendations for waste wastewater. Uh, and it's really aligning the rates to reflect how difficult it is to clean the waste stream from those clients. So what we did is we want to verify the wastewater pollutant strength for each customer class and make sure that the rate for that customer class is, is um, similar to what it costs to actually treat the wastewater. So when we were looking through our rates, we found some opportunities to make some minor uh, adjustments. It doesn't have a significant rate impact, but it does uh, impact a few customers, and we'll show that on a, on a couple slides. And the last one is very similar to what we have in sewer excuse me, what we have in water, where we have a combination of your bill as a fixed and variable charge. However, in wastewater, every meter, regardless of the size, is charged the same fixed cost at $18.35. It um, doesn't matter if you're a single family home with a three quarter inch meter or if you're a large apartment building with a four inch meter, you sort of pay the same fixed cost. And so the idea is to make that more equ equitable across the customer classes, again, by spreading that out over a five year period with a fixed charge capped for four inch uh, water meters or larger. And the analogy to use sort of is, is if you can think about it, the, the charges that, that trucks have to pay to cross the Bay, the Bay Bridge. Not only do you pay each time, not only do you pay a toll each time you go across the bridge, the more axles you have on your, on your truck, sort of the more you have to pay because you have more of it, an impact to the, the bridge. Similar situation for our, our water and sewer systems where the large, the large customers will have sort of a greater impact on the system than the smaller customers, which is why we have the recommendation to align these fixed charges with the actual capacity of the customers. Here is a little breakdown of how the, the structure recommendations would shake out among a few different types of customer classes. Um, there for the your typical single family home, which is 16 units of water every two months and 12 units of your winter use for waste wastewater, there's not really much of, of, of a change. Just a little bit of increase in for water if you would just do the rate increase only as opposed to doing the rate increase plus some of the structural changes that we had just recommended. So doing the structural changes, it's just a little bit of an, of an increase for water, not much for sewer. If you were actually a low water user, um, you would actually benefit a little bit more. Uh, so you'd actually see a decrease. Uh, and then here are the slides for the rates for all five years of the proposed rate, rate period, what the bi-monthly water bill is, what the increase is from the, pre the, uh, the, with, from the previous year, and then the same for sewer. And again, these are, are bi-monthly bills, not monthly bills. So these are the bills that your typical uh, San Bruno homeowner would see if they use 18 units of water, um, and their winter average water use was 12, 12 units of water. Uh, the, the final uh, recommendation to consider that really isn't a part of this action, but it's something that we'll probably look at at a later date, is to collect the wastewater charges on the property tax roll. This would assure 100% collection of the total bill, regardless of the delinquencies. 
It's a very, it's a pretty common practice among a lot of different Peninsula agencies. Um, that uh, the the difference though is the change in payment responsibility shifts from the tenants, whoever lives at the property, to the property owners. And so to allow that transition enough time, um, the the recommendation would be to roll this out after sort of a year of lead lead time to give folks plenty of time to readjust any uh, rental agreements they may have. In summary, our recommendation is uh, to issue the notice for five-year annual rate increase with 9.8% uh, for water, 10.3% for wastewater, modify the water rate structure to align fixed charge with meter size and to add the third tier for single-family uh, single customers to modify the wastewater array structure to align fixed uh, charge with water meter size also, and to align wastewater, wastewater pollutants ranked for each customer class with treatment cost. Next step, what you can expect um, to issue the uh, uh, proposition 218 no, uh, noticing the mailing uh, will include also for uh, uh, the property uh, owner not notification for uh, the garbage rates. On May 8 uh, will be the first public hearing for uh, rate adjustment. And on May 22nd will be the second reading of the ordinance with the intent uh, to have the new rate, adjusted rate in place by July 1st. In meantime, during this time, uh, depending on your uh, need and desire, uh, if you want any uh, additional meeting or study session, uh, certainly the staff will be available, including the outside uh, consultant uh, to help you with any information what uh, you might need. Uh, this concludes our presentation and uh, all of us uh, will uh, try to answer your questions. Any questions of staff? Through the chair. Yes, I, don't expect, I don't expect an immediate answer to this because I'm just going to come from left field on this one. Um, I look at your policy goals and objectives and part of the, uh, the beginning of your presentation and believe me, I don't need any explanation on what's needed in this city and, you know, 100 years of deteriorating infrastructure and things and trying to catch up over many years and uh, what we've done just in the last 15 years to, to help uh, improve our system. But when you say aim for a steady, gradual annual rate increase to the extent possible to help minimize the annual impact on customers, and you look at your plan for 10 years, after f it's 100%, over 100% increase. I mean, four years from now, I'm going to be paying water for, you know, bi monthly $175. Now, I may be okay for that, and I know there's going to be complaints from some residents. So I, the question I ask is, when you're dealing with consultants and when you're trying to struggle with what needs to be done, how much money needs to go into a capital improvement program, what are you deter? I mean, is there a formula as to what is comfortable for an average resident? Because to go, you know, each year when that increase is 10% more, I mean, that's a noticeable increase, and especially when it's compounded with water, compounded with wastewater, and then garbage, and then cable, and then every other utility. It's, I mean, we're going to hear it. And, I mean, 16 years ago, we sat here and we, we understood, and... We spiked the rates, but this is almost like a spike every year. So I want to just get an idea of what staff, consultants, subcommittee, where are you, how are you determining that this is 
an adequate increase for the average resident. Let me, if Mr. I can just Mr. ask something on, on top of that. I, I believe it was mentioned at the very beginning that this was a long-term projection and that we have the opportunity to scale it back or increase it as necessary over the years. Will we be getting, uh, with this continuous update test, that this is where you are, where you should be, and uh, how, does, how does that fit? Because I see Ken's point, if this is a, a stamp uh, in July 1st, that this is what's going to happen for sure, then that's one thing. But if it's this is where we, we think we need to go, but we're going to give you updates as we go along, and we can we can scale this back if, in fact, we need to over a period of time. Yeah, yes, the, the, you're absolutely correct, Mr. Mayor. Let me try and address the, the uh, comment uh, that you've made, uh, uh, Vice Mayor Ibera. The, um, I think that there was perhaps a, um, uh, we, we might have captured this bullet point on the policy issues in a slightly different manner because I think your commentary is well taken. Um, the process of setting rates is a primarily a function of evaluating at the minimal effective level the revenue requirement for operating, maintaining, rehabilitating, and otherwise sustaining the integrity and the reliability of the utility system. So it is a function, it is an activity that is fund fundamentally driven by a revenue requirement. Now, that said, it is always our objective to minimize uh, consistent with the City Council's clear guidance and policy direction, that we do everything that is possible to understand and to minimize the impact on individual ratepayers. This is, and I don't think there's any um, uh, two ways about it, this is a significant increase on both the water and the wastewater costs for virtually all customers. And there, while there is some opportunity to contain or control costs that an individual household, for example, might experience by implementing water conservation techniques, uh, I think it is fair to say that the rate increase is probably still significant for most of the households in our community. Um, so I think it was, it is perhaps a, a a, a bit misstated to suggest that the um, uh, specifically the um, the uh, that that the rates minimize the impact on customers. Um, although that is a highest priority in our evaluation of the rates, what this bullet point was intended to remind the City Council is our continuing adherence and understanding to the City Council's policy priority, which was articulated three years ago when we presented a 10-year planning horizon for rate setting. And at that time, and again three years ago, we presented a, a variety of options for your consideration whereby the rate could be set in a manner that addressed specifically the revenue requirement, the expected revenue requirement in each of those 10 years. And given the variability in when projects might be completed, might, using your word again, spike the rates in a, in a given year 15 or 18 percent, and in the next year make the rate increase, say, 5 percent. What was intended here is simply adherence to the council's guidance that what you wanted was re revenue uh, ratepayers to be able to anticipate what the expected annual rate increase would be by providing a level annual rate increase. Now there's again, I don't think any argument can reasonably be made that this doesn't represent a potential significant impact to some of our rate paying households. However, it is fully consistent with the revenue requirements at the minimum level for the enterprise operations and it is consistent with the City Council's previously articulated policy guidance and direction. I, I hope that clarifies at least what we were thinking when we wrote this. 
Did you have did you have like a minimum increase in mind? I mean that that you said that we had to be. I mean, is this is this the base where it has to be? You know, in order to in, you know, in order to sustain operations at the current levels and to provide the necessary improvements to assure long-term reliability of the system and a continuing ability to serve our customers. Uh, the answer is yes. That said, you have the ability, as the mayor indicated, in any year to decrease expenditures, defer capital projects, reduce operations, and thereby, and thereby decrease the revenue requirement. Uh, should you decide to do that, uh, the uh, legal requirements for providing property owner notice would allow you to do that to lower the rate without any further um, notice to the public. You're only precluded from increasing the rate. So you could reduce expenditures. Staff is not recommending that you consider that at this time um, in any major way. Uh, and you could do that in any year of this recommended five-year rate implementation. I'm going to be facetious and say I'm, I'm sustaining the council's argument from three years ago because I remember, now it's all coming back to me, that we did discuss the same points because we were somewhat uh, alerted to how, how, how high some of these rates were going to be increased. And so I believe we did reduce the rate that was recommended. We leveled it off. Um, I yeah. don't recommend. I don't I th remember. I think we that. made an adjustment. I mean, we made an adjustment that uh, that uh, that reduced the uh, the actual expenditure. I, I got that off my chest because I know that <laughs> we are. Good. You know, this is. I mean, you know, with you know, with uh, with the garbage coming up and with you know these uh, with these rates, and this is that's the sign of the times. It's just, it's the time of the year that this happens, and. Uh, you know, we have to go out there and and sell it, and hopefully uh, encourage our you know our customers, our residents that you know we are doing the right thing, whatever we do. Thank you. Any questions of staff? Uh, Irene. Thank you. More of a comment, um, and and I'd like to st thank staff and the consultants. They answered all our questions. They went. We had one meeting and. Um, Councilman Salazar and I had many questions and uh, we wanted uh, in immediate information and they came back to us very quickly with uh, uh, rates adjustments that we had asked about and uh, some backup information. So I really appreciate what you all did. That's the Texas in me. Um, the other piece I want to emphasize with this is nobody likes to pay increased rates. We all sitting up here are going to have to pay increased rates. It's not a pleasant thing particularly, but remember that the rate increases are going for the most part to capital improvements. The capital improvements are going to the health and safety of our residents. Um, I was sharing some pictures that my father had taken in 1967 where the, there was raw sewage on the streets and people walked in it or drove their cars in it and took it into the house and I'm sure it was not a pleasant or healthy uh, experience. And so from that point, not all that long ago to now, we have improved the system and we still have a lot of improvement to do and that's what the money goes to. It goes to those kinds of things. So. While we don't want to in, uh, increase rates, we have to. Um, the other piece I want to remind people, we do still have, and correct me if I'm in, uh, wrong, is the 25% discount for low-income families. Um, that does not come from rate payers. You, we're, we're not robbing Peter to pay Paul type of thing. It comes from overcharges. I mean, uh, I'm sorry. Penalty charges. Penalty charges, that's what it was. So it, it doesn't change your everyone else's rate. So we do have that and I believe we're the only city in San Mateo County who does. So that's some relief for some people. Sure. <clears throat> One thing that confused me, but I think I've got it now, is that the slide was saying over the next 10 years, but rate increases that we're referencing and resolution is over the next five years, just so that they're just 
because the average person, and I'm, I'm, I'm probably below average in most people's mind, but I would have said, well, wait a minute, I thought it's five, but it says 10. You are absolutely correct. What I, am, I was referring to and the slide was referring to that all of the project, uh, financial projection was done for 10 years. That was for 10 years, three years ago. Now that was uh, uh, the financial projection for the next 10 years, beginning this year. But the recommendation is only just for five years to set the rates for the next five years. The other thing, in one of the, the slide, it, does, it stated that this is for operation and maintenance costs. So to me, that indicates not only the vehicles, the staffing, and other things that comes along, labor parts, et cetera, to operate the systems. With that means staffing. Staffing could mean additional headcount to the department, which two weeks ago alluded additional staffing. That I'd like to better understand. Um, it, also, I saw in the presentation two weeks ago, if I'm not mistaken, to uh, an acquisition of a, if, and correct me, uh, Vactor uh, in this year of 2012, which would be the, is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. That would be the third Vactor within a year that we've purchased. Have we received the other two Vactors yet? Uh, the second is, uh, uh, is not here yet. The first one is? The new first one? Yes. Oh, thank you. So. I'm looking to the need for a third factor, which now we have a potential need for a more staff, which is not quantified yet, but I guess that would be for budget. But these percentages and numbers drive the percentage, the rate increase of what is perceived is needed in order to operate the department that will come to us in the budget cycle. And then at that time, we're going to be presented with additional machines and operations and staffing. In this 10-year uh, financial projection is not included anything which was not discussed, presented, and approved by you previously. This 10-year uh, projection does not include additional staff, includes all of the requirement what uh, was presented to you to meet uh, the uh, CD and CDO requirements, uh, how uh, I indicated, set by uh, those agreements, also uh, includes a certain escalation, how you are uh, uh, project uh, projecting any uh, financial uh, long-term cost, but does not include any uh, additional staffing, or any additional uh, uh, improvement other than already approved and previously discussed with the council. Okay, so did I miss two weeks ago that it was not addition? Correct me if I'm wrong, please. Um, is that I saw another factor, and you're saying that was already prior approved three years ago or whatever the prior talks, and the term was used staffing. Staffing was additional. And you're telling me that that's not the case, so that at the budget cycle, we're not going to have anything come forward for additional staffing or headcount to the department? Uh, it is correct. The third vector is included in our uh, proposed uh, capital improvement program. The proposed capital improvement program for, because, with the rate increases, or are you saying prior to this? Or is it upcoming? So mm -hmm. I, I guess I, well, I I'm, I'm a little lost at this point. I'm sorry. The third vector is included in our existing improvement program, which was uh, reviewed by uh, the council previously. And this 10-year financial projection does not include, other than inflation and all of, uh, 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 all of uh, the required adjustment through those years, does not include additional staffing need other than already presented to you in our, disc uh, in our prior discussion for wastewater. For 211-212? Correct. So when we go... I, I would just like to add uh, one uh, item of, cl of uh, detailed clarification on the Vactor track. Mm -hmm. Vactor was shown in the capital improvement program budget that you saw last year. It was shown Correct. as an acquisition <coughs> for the current year. Correct? 
frankly, I really don't remember if for what year was shown. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't, so I am just, just not certain. Okay, I, I believe that it was shown as an acquisition for the current year. And if that's the case, then that uh, approval has not yet been submitted to or provided by the city council. We will double check that you are correct. to make sure that uh, what I'm telling you is accurate. Suffice it to say that any uh, expenditures are approved each year in the budget process. They are estimated and anticipated for planning purposes in the multi-year rate setting process. But they are not authorized and they are not expended until the city council acts on the, specifically on the budget. So the director has told you that this planning horizon does not include any additional staff and we will uh, re-verify what I'm telling you about the Vactor truck. Um, I am pretty positive. That, that was, correct. yes, that okay. is correct. Was included in our uh, this year uh, plan. Right. But the you, third Vector. Correct. So you have not yet acted to approve the acquisition. Correct. It was um, identified as a uh, future year acquisition in last year's capital budget. So it's correct to say that you have seen it. Okay, thank you. Um, and I know a lot happens in three years. I think all of us here in this community realize three years ago to today, a lot that can happen. And it is hard to explain to the average person uh, like myself to say, well, every system is different because in most, you go in the house, you turn on the faucet, the water runs, you flush the toilet, you know, you're all hoping it goes where it's supposed to. Um, and then to say, but everything's different. Well, it is. It's different on the age. It's different on this. I, I sometimes look to South City and look at that, those rates, and I'm told, well, there's a lot of commercial. And, just, and so that can help balance out the rates to where the homeowner may not be paying as much. So then I look to San Carlos, which obviously doesn't have the type of commercial infrastructure, and they're low as well. So, and I know San Carlos is not a, um, shall we say, a foster city that has a newer infrastructure. So it would help me to have some, something quantified to tell folks, well, everything's different. Well, we know that. Every city's different. Every, everyone's unique. But at the same time, systems operate in some similar manners. So how do you explain to the person that San Carlos is cheaper because? I just will, would have one uh, uh, comment on that, that uh, depending if you are making those investments in your system in the right time. If you are deferring those, then the cost will go up. You would need to assess their system when they made investment on their system, how much they already replaced on ongoing basis uh, and minimizing cost, replacing in uh, uh, time, or if they had uh, a uh, high deferred replacement and maintenance costs. That's why you really need to understand the whole system and the history of investment in their system to have a uh, holistic picture. Does it have any reference that because both of those cities deal with cow water, that it's different because they're a bigger entity or that uh, mm -hmm. they have more resources or that it's more divided out? Is that a potential? Uh, in addition to the holistic aspect of it? or I, I, I am not specifically commenting on uh, uh, that uh, city not knowing enough about their system, but I would uh, say also that size count or, uh, makes, a different, uh, makes a difference also. If you have a bigger system, uh, then uh, uh, is possible, depending on your system, uh, maybe uh, the rate uh, can be lower or so. But the main thing is how, uh, how you are investing on ongoing basis and how you are maintaining your system. Exactly no difference than any, any house or anything else. If you are investing the right time in your home before the roof will uh, be destroyed, if uh, uh, you are reinvesting in the maintenance and ongoing replacement, that's how you are minimizing the cost. If you are deferring uh, some of those major replacement and uh, repair, then 
your uh, end cost will be higher that you will need to replace uh, uh, instead of just repeating certain uh, uh, portion of uh, that home or system, any system. So uh, there are a number of factors that go into an analysis that would more specifically answer that question. It is actually a fairly complex and detailed uh, analysis that would need to occur. If the council would like, uh, we can certainly uh, attempt to get the information from either or both of those jurisdictions and to try and uh, put together an analysis that may help you <coughs> or help us all understand that question a little bit better, we'd be happy to return with that information. That's Council's pleasure. So Anyone else like to ask questions of staff? Your Honorable Mayor and members of the City Council, uh, City of San Bruno staff, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Alan Lupke. I reside on Fleetwood Drive. I have three and a half questions. My first is the one and a half question is uh, what portion of the fee or assessment is it proposed that be placed on the assessment tax roll? And then how, how would that, what, what amount what does that amount to for, for say, an individual versus what it would be on their, on their uh, tax, uh, on their, uh, you know, monthly, uh, monthly statement or whatever we get twice monthly or whatever? Excuse me, Carol, could you push that button, please? Thank you. City Manager? I'm sorry, couldn't you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Would you like me? To, would you like us to answer that question? Pardon? Would you like us to answer that? Yes, question? please. Okay. Please. Yeah. Um, the wastewater charge is proposed to be collected on the property tax bill uh, beginning July of 2013. It would be collected at precisely the same amount that it is uh, currently under consideration by you. Uh, the method of collection would not change the amount that would be collected already on there then. Okay, then um, question, and that took care of uh, one, one and a half. The uh, next question is, um, if you could just throw up one of those charts that shows a uh, percentage increases by year, and I, were those increases uh, from the, all from the base year, or would they go from year, from the previous year? In each case, the increase is from the previous year from the previous year so okay so and uh do you have any do you have one that with the percentages there that shows percentages i think that's perhaps what uh, vice mayor abera was getting at where he got those where he accumulated those percentages so it's from the previous year so year one we go a percent and then we then we got a new level and then the next we go to another and that's from the base level. Okay. Uh, what would be, then my final question is, what would be the total cost uh, for, for, for the city for, uh, by, for picking up the tab for the uh, public if uh, we decided to do, if the city decided to do that uh, based on the uh, windfall of uh, $70 million, what would be the cost of the city for, let's just say, for the first increase for the first first year will be the total cost. This information is not available, uh, Mr. Mayor, would uh, need to be developed by us. That information is not available, and I can tell you right now that that $70 million is not even in the bank yet, so. Well, I understand that. All I'm asking is, I'm asking a what-if question, I, I would think that you, you're, you're basing you, 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 a certain amount of fees that you're going to, uh, charges that you're going to increase, you're going to get a certain dollar amount from the, uh, you know, what's that total of dollar amount for the first year? That's all I'm asking. 
So the question is the amount of revenue raised in the in the first year. Certainly have that information available. Uh, so for water, the uh, the 2012-13 building revenues would be uh, 10.8 million dollars, and for sewer it would be 11.9. Uh, 11.9. Yeah. 10.8 and 11.9. 11.9. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Name is Paul Belanker. I live at 323 Cypress Avenue. Last time I was here, I talked about the same thing. It's ironic. I just came just to listen. Uh, on the water bill, we have two things, service charge for water and service charge for sewer. Water service charge is 25 and change, and the sewer is $18 and change. I had the same question when I came up the first time, maybe three or four years ago and I was told it's a study. Well, it, it adds to the bill, and it wasn't addressed at all tonight. Well, you talked about it's water, 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 and infrastructure. Isn't the service charge part of the bill, and shouldn't it be addressed in the same way? Thank you. So if, if I understand the question appropriately. A little closer, Jim. Uh, if I understand that question appropriately, it was the discussion of, of how is the, is the fixed charge treated with respect to the variable charge. So in the in the proposed rates, the proposed five year rates, there are are proportional increases both to the monthly the monthly fee, the uh, for so if the eighteen dollars per month for a residential sewer would, would would go up accordingly, as well as the variable rate increase charge. So both both aspects of the of the of the charges that appear on your bill would be addressed by the by the revised rates. If, if that answers the question, Does that answer your question. Okay. Well, I'm 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 confused now. <laughs> I mean, the ratepayer is paying based on its usage, the amount of water and the amount of used water that goes out. So, what is the service charge? What does that go towards? You know, is that just the charge to be able to use the system? The the service charge is. Is the proportion of, of charge sort of allocated to the the fixed cost? There are, are a variety of ways to to assign rates and assign um, uh, a portion charges. And, and for San Bruno, we have about 22% of the cost are deemed as fixed costs, and uh, then the remaining would be a variable cost. So that is how the rate is proportioned between the variable charge on your bill and the the fixed monthly cost on your on your bill. Doesn't 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 get at it <laughs> try one more time okay okay all right can you is that the cost that goes into the capital improvement is that the amount that goes into the capital improvement I mean if you're talking about rates of the amount of water that we use or the amount of sewage that we expel whatever you know we're paying for that what is the amount that goes into that bypasses all of our uses that goes into the till to pay for the long-term capital improvements, right? Um, that the, that actual amount isn't separated on a year-to-year -year basis, and it, it it would vary depending on on how many improvements are done in a particular year. So there is the all the fixed charges and the variable charges are lumped together into the enterprise funds. Could we just clarify? I think that uh, you're asking whether the fixed charge, based on meter size, is segregated in some way and dedicated to capital. Is that the question? Actually, initially, which I thought the resident was going to was asking was, what does that charge go towards? Um, and I, I don't really care how it's broken up, whether okay. it's fixed or it's variable, whatever. What is that? Eighteen dollars for sewer and twenty something dollars for water. What does that go to pay for? It pays for all of the operating costs, including uh, staff, equipment, contractually obligated costs. For example, for operation of the South San Francisco San Bruno wastewater treatment plant, and for capital improvements okay. to maintain the system. So all lumped together because all lumped that together. would be. That would be the variable in various communities as to why, you know, 
we set aside more than, say, another community to do capital improvements, why we, we have a larger staff than maybe another community does or something. Okay. Thank you. So we have a gallon of water in a bucket, and we're paying for the water, but we also have to pay for somebody to, to take the water and, and let you use it. And if you have a gallon of waste, we pay for, you know, the waste, if you will, but you also have to take, have to pay somebody to throw it away and, and dispose of it properly. So that's the difference between the fixed cost and the, and the, uh, the other. I think the theory behind rate setting, and this is a very typical methodology, is that you have a cost that is, um, part of the charge that you collect recognizes the fact that the system has to be ready to deliver you the first drop of water or to accept the first bucket of, of wastewater. That is a, um, it's a, it's a feature of what is necessary in order to operate the system. Then there is the cost that is associated with the and the revenue requirement that is associated with treating a little bit or a lot uh, or delivering a little bit or a lot. Now, at, so it is, a, it is a means of capturing in the rate structure a, the best possible means of, uh, of accounting for the customer's demand and utilization of the system. And that's, it's philosophically how rates are set. The revenue all comes out and goes into, uh, into one pot, and then it is used to provide for all of the operating requirements of the system. So it's, it, it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, but it is in, in terms of the way rates are typically set as a means of providing fairness or equity across customers. Everybody owns a portion of the fact that this, or needs to pay a proportionate share of the fact that the system needs to be ready. And then customers based on their utilization might pay more or less because they are using more or less. It's a rate setting methodology. Thank you, that was clear. And, 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 I, and, and I want to apologize. Jim and staff, this, this isn't, I don't want to be argumentative or anything, but I'm just trying to understand it because I know that there are going to be residents that are going to be asking and, you know, every single utility we're going to have to be able to be uh, able to explain all, every single cent that we're going, that's going into it. Okay, Michael. Through the chair, I just wanted to add uh, my own perception of, of the whole process and you know, the, the, uh, the questions are definitely valid and uh, something that uh, Council Member O'Connell and I uh, found out uh, pretty quickly is that it's not a simple process and there are probably a million ways that you could do this. And uh, at least on the sewer side, we, we asked the question, what if we went to uh, just a flat rate and it, it's something that's available to us? We can take away the variable part from that and it would be a lot simpler. But the answer came back that that would make it uh, dramatically more expensive for our biggest um, usage base. And so we decided not to go that route and um, keep that um, fixed versus fixed plus variable uh, system that we have currently. And so it's um, <clears throat> really once we identified the target and we knew how much money we needed to get in order to maintain the system, um, from there it was just a matter of, of slicing it up different ways. And it's just an exercise in cost accounting where you figure out what is re something reasonable. Um, but like the uh, city manager said, it's, um, it's everything. And, and part of it we kept as a base. That keeps a, a, a little bit of stability in the rate so that we know that we have the cash flow that we need to, to operate uh, the plant on, on a monthly basis. And then the rest of it we, we can make variable. And that's the part that the customers have control over. So they maintain a little bit of control over uh, their, their overall rate, uh, but a part of it stays uh, constant for, uh, for cash flow purposes. Yeah. Thank you. Any more discussion? It just a qu question on the resolution. <clears throat> we have a new resolution before us tonight that wasn't in the packet. 
what I'm trying to understand is, um, and I guess it's just to identify the per particular percentages at the water or wastewater, but also when it starts to say uh, to reveal the revenue needed 10.3 percent for each year for 10 years to cover necessary operating and capital improvement costs, and and of course I understand this for five years it states out in the bottom, but what's what's <clears throat> what's the necessity or the intent in order to allude to this is what's needed for 10 years because to me if we get to the fifth year to, to predict 10 years I mean the sixth seventh eighth ninth and ten year that this is already what we I, I don't know how you again I'm not an expert here there's a lot of smarter people in this room but I don't know how I can sit here and say yeah you're right in the ninth and tenth year this is what it should be The whereas clauses are intended in the resolution only to outline the thought process that got you to the conclusion that is the action embodied in the resolution. And uh, that this, these couple of clauses were inserted in order for uh, full explanation and clarity about how the rates were analyzed and the information that was utilized in order to get to the rate program and again to articulate as we discussed earlier the uh, ongoing policy of the city to look on a multi-year um, and advanced planning horizon in order to maintain as close as possible a level annual rate increase profile so that's the only purpose for that information being inserted into the resolution. It's the council's pleasure to not include that information. It can certainly be deleted without any effect on the action itself. I was just trying to better understand, but I, I don't. Maybe to the but subcommittee. I'm trying. To, I'm. Yeah, you know, I know we're looking for five years, but now we're actually projecting six to ten years. Is that to give people a heads up to say, well, this is what we think might be happening in the sixth through tenth year potentially? Well, part of it is um, the the study looked at the types of things that needed to be done within the ten year frame mm -hmm. time frame, and the kind of uh, predicted costs of those things. So, and I believe is eighty four million dollars. And if we have to divide those things up in 10 years, how much do we need per year to do that? And that's what it came out to. So the five year is to give us, well, I believe that's the outer limit of the 218 notice, is it not? So that, that's where the five, we, we were given the choice of the three year or the five year. Michael and I and staff were recommending to you we do the five year notification. But the figures came from a 10-year horizon. At the end of any given year, we might have might find that we have made so many capital improvements that we don't need to do as much, and we can adjust after that. But, but if we say it's, it's like you look at your house, okay? In 10 years, I need to you know, replace the rugs, replace the linoleum, put new faucets in, replace the roof, and and do new concrete in the driveway. That's going to cost me. You know, $200,000 for 10 years. I, you know, I have to spend $20,000 to to get those things done. So that's kind of where we came from. Yeah, and I do know costs go up. Over, you know, <laughs> yeah. So that what we're looking at today, if we can well. predict in eight, nine, ten years how much things are going to cost. Um, we've got a crystal ball too. So, but I do appreciate that explanation. That helps. Does that uh, clarify? Clarify that. Okay. Thank you. And yeah. I got it right, right. Else, Michael. Yeah, I was just going to add that uh, part of um, of what the consultants brought to the table was the fact that they were able to model some of this and, and do sensitivity studies based on what if certain variables were to change. And uh, given that, I mean, they, we looked at a lot of different scenarios. They looked at, at probably way more scenarios than were presented to us. But um, what, what, what we ended up seeing is that there was very little variability in the proposed rate based on any number of factors. and. The biggest driver is the fact that we need so many capital, large capital projects, that that is the biggest driver. And um, I, I think staff felt that we had a pretty good handle on um, what those, even over a 10-year horizon, what those costs would be for, for those projects. I appreciate your uh, clarification, too. And so this action tonight is uh, just to allow Prop 218 to go forward uh, and put out the draft information that we have before us to the residents for their 45-day of protest feedback and to bring it back to council for public hearing, correct? Correct. This is not the actual rate increase. Good. Thank you. 
to the chair, if I could ask Michael. one one final question. Um, as we're going through this um, this this um, uh, period, the 45-day period, uh, I was wondering if we could look a little closer um, at the um, the 25% discount. And it, it came up that that comes from um, penalties, late penalties. Uh, but I remember hearing in the subcommittee meeting that if we go to the um, putting the sewer tax on the tax rolls, the county would then get any penalties, any late penalties associated with that. So there's a potential loss in that income pool. So I wanted to know what that impact might look like uh, based on historical late fees and if we can still adequately fund that 25%. I was really moved by what uh, Council Member or Vice Mayor uh, Ibera said about really looking at uh, the real impact to the customers. And I, I know we can get very technical in these things and that's a factor that un unfortunately we, we didn't really look at. That information can be provided. Thank you. Okay. Good. Good point. Anything else? Action? Um, I'll introduce resolution for adoption. Council Member O'Connell? Aye. Council Member Medina? Aye. Council Member Salazar? Aye. Vice Mayor Ibera? Aye. Mayor Ruane? Aye.